department. My future son-in-law said there's really four W's. Uh, don't forget to wash your hands, wear your mask, watch your distance, and also worship with all your heart, right? And as we do uh, today, we also want to give thanks for those who have served our nation in our uniform services. So I would like to ask all those who have served in our military on this Veterans Day weekend to stand so that we might recognize you. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and the assembly. Great are the words of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for all those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of the all nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. and acted in faith and righteousness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal life. Brothers and sisters, even when we are faithless, Christ remains faithful. Trusting in the infinite grace of our God, let us confess our sins. Jesus, Esther, have mercy on us. We keep our distance from you, for we are broken and sick with sin. Yet you see us, you cleanse us, and you make us whole. Forgive us when we forget to return to you. Have mercy when we fail to praise your name. Help us to radiate the faith that makes us well. Amen. Hear the good news. Your cry for mercy has been answered. Christ has healed you, and he forgives your sin. With glad heart, let us return praise to God for his unending grace and mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of our salvation, you are the source of wisdom and joy. Your love and mercies are not limited to one time or to one people. You continue to heal and save, transcending the artificial boundaries and barriers we set. For, for such expansive love, it is our right, duty, and joy to offer you all our thanks and praise now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament lesson this morning is from 2 Kings. Select verses from chapter 5. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded, because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he's trying to pick a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a message to say to him, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God. 
wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar and the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in rage. Naaman's servants went to him and said, my father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson comes from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and, all, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we're in this season where we're preparing for Thanksgiving, perhaps the most unique Thanksgiving any of us have ever had, we are taking some time to talk about thanks and giving. Today, we really look at what it means to return thanks. That's kind of a play on words, and we're going to be engaged today by the Word of God that comes from us, to us from Luke chapter 17, the story of the leper who returned to Jesus. And as we talk about this, I want you to be thinking, with whom in this story do you identify? With whom in this story do you identify? Do you identify with the leper who was cleansed and returned to Jesus? Or perhaps with someone else in this story, maybe the nine lepers who did not? And as we hear God's word today, our prayer is that God would shape us so that we would not just look at Thanksgiving as a day on the calendar in November, but rather we would look at uh, how we as God's people have been designed to live lives of thanks. Thanks living, someone once said. So as we take a look at Luke chapter 17, we see that Jesus is traveling along the border near Samaria, and he sees these 10 people, or these 10 people with leprosy, see Jesus. They stay far off at a distance as they ought to. 
And as they do, they call out to Jesus. They say, Jesus, master or ruler, have pity on us. And Jesus simply says, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they go, they were cleansed. First thing I want you to think about today, even before we really get into the characters in the story, if you have a need, where do you go with that need? These 10 who had a need for beyond just healing, but a need for companionship, a need to connect with community, a, a need to not be so isolated, they go to Jesus. They recognize that in Jesus, he is the one who can meet their needs, so they call out to him, Jesus, have mercy on us. They call out to Jesus because they trust that he is one who is filled with mercy. They call out to Jesus because they trust that he has power. Even in his very person, Jesus is gracious and merciful and acceptable or, or accessible to us as his people. And all of us need something from Jesus, no matter who you are. Perhaps that's peace, perhaps hope, perhaps forgiveness, perhaps chains broken, sins that you can leave behind. We all ought to come to Jesus and say, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. I once asked a congregation to take a little card in the pew. This is back when we used to have cards in the pews. And I said, write down, if you could have any miracle granted by God this week, what is it that you would ask God for? Two-thirds, almost three-quarters of those who wrote out on that little card, just a word or two, put, they would like to ask God for peace. Such a need for that in our world, such a need for that in our lives, such a need for that. And it's something that Jesus can give. And these 10 who call out to Jesus, when Jesus gives his instructions, go, show yourselves to the priest, they help us to know what to do when we encounter Jesus, when we go to him, when we call upon him. Listen to him. Do what he says. As I said, Jesus in his very person is accessible. That is grace. And he is in who he is, the one who has power to change things. He is compassionate and gracious. He welcomes us. He listens. No one could ever be more in tune with our needs than Jesus is. And his word has power. So when he says, go show yourselves to the priests as they go, these ten lepers are cleansed. Well, we get to the one, and here's probably where the main point is. One of them when he saw that he was healed, came back. He's praising God in a loud voice. You can see the commotion that he is chest raising as everybody is seeing what he is doing, what he is saying. And he throws himself at Jesus' feet and thanks him. And then there's this footnote. And he was a Samaritan. What does that mean? Well, this one who came back to Jesus was an outsider. He had no business coming to Jesus. Then again, none of us have any business coming to Jesus, do we? None of us has any, ever done anything that should make Jesus recognize us in such a way that he would then serve us. Rather, it is because of who he is and what he has come to do that he served us going all the way to the cross for us. None of us have any reason where in and of ourselves, we could stand before Jesus. Just as this Samaritan would have been identified by everybody as having no business coming near anybody who was religious or a part of God's people. 
And Jesus asked this pointed question. We're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise except this foreigner? I said, I wanted you to think about who you identified with in this story. Think for a second. Before you judge too harshly the nine that are cleansed who do not come back to Jesus, could you imagine what it must have been like for them? They had been separated from others, isolated. And now all of a the sudden, they are experiencing a release. They've been set free. It would be almost as if someone had canceled the virus, right? What would you do? Would you go to Jesus if life had been on hold for so long? Or would you go back to life, making up for lost time? Perhaps some of these nine went back to see their family from whom they had been isolated because they could not be around anybody with their leprosy. They had been in isolation. Perhaps some of them went back to their jobs because without their jobs, not only were they not able to earn anything, but I think jobs provide us with a sense of, a sense of purpose in this world. Perhaps they went back to find their purpose. Perhaps they just wanted to be a part of the community. Before you judge them too harshly, can you identify with them? And then this one that comes to Jesus. Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? And how does he come? He bows down at Jesus' feet, clasps his feet in worship, and he thanks God. Really, that thanksgiving is only an attitude that God could have planted in this one who knew how isolated, how separated, how unworthy they were. And they come to Jesus to give thanks. You know, it's very possible. Maybe this one remembered the words of the prophet where the prophet Joel said, Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. And so he comes, he returns to give thanks. And then Jesus says, rise and go. Your faith, in this version of the Bible, it says your faith has healed you. But the real word used there is save. Your faith has saved you. You have been rescued. You and I, we've been rescued we have been set free, not from a pandemic, from something much, much worse, from sin and death and the power of the evil one. We have been set free to be the people of God, the children of God, and God desires to draw from our hearts and from our lives thanks. And as we live and demonstrate what it is that God has done for us, as we give thanks to him for all of his blessings, all of his benefits to us, just like people took notice of this leper who came back after he had been healed and he's praising God and raising this commotion where no one could even ignore it. We don't need to go around doing that, but if we live lives of gratitude that are grounded in who Jesus is, I believe people will take notice. I believe it will look different from what people normally see even when they see people who are typically grateful for the gratitude that we have towards God. When it's rooted in Jesus, we recognize that he's the one for us to come to. He invites us to pray and to praise and to give thanks. He's the one that God has given so that we could identify the one who is merciful walking on this earth, giving his life for us. And we can reflect on what it means that we do not deserve anything from his hand, but he has given us everything, heaven itself, so that we would live as the people of God. And as we live as his people, as we yield our, up our hearts in gratitude, as he transforms our lives, people will take notice. 
for a life lived in gratitude to Christ for all He has done will show itself in doing things for others, in serving them as a way of serving Him who has set us free. And all the world will know that Christ who has come for all people is the one who comes to bring God's good gifts. Thanks be to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise as we sing. Let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the prayers of the church. We bless you, O oh God, for your power in, in mighty deeds and tender mercies. We bless you, O oh God, for your watchful care in places of exile and at home. We bless you, O oh God, for your healing presence in sickness and in brokenness. We pray to you for the needs of the world, for those enslaved by political, military, or social oppression for those suffering from violence and illnesses we can prevent, for those at risk from famine, drought, and natural disasters. We pray to you for the renewing of creation, for an end to harmful habits and willful ruin, for heightened 
care for species at risk, for more faithful stewards among us toward Earth's resources. We pray to you for the cares of our community, for those who have lost jobs, homes, and hope, for those who are hungry today and will be again tomorrow, for those troubled in mind, body, or spirit, and for those recovering. We pray to you for the cares we hold this day, for patience in difficulty, for a renewal of commitment, for grace to forgive ourselves or another. O oh Lord, our Governor, your glory shines throughout the world. We commend our nation to your merciful care that we may live securely in peace and may be guided by your providence. Give all in authority, especially President Trump and President-elect Joe Biden, the wisdom and strength to know your will and to do it. Help them remember that they are called to serve the people as lovers of truth and justice. Heal us, we pray, in our diseases, estrangement, and in the broken places of our lives. May we return to you in joy and thanksgiving according to your grace. Give your church fresh courage and bold vision in this changeful time as we pray for the welfare of all people. In the name of the one who came to heal and to save, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we pray. Amen.
how this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith that leads to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Glorious God, we praise you. We praise you for you who, for who you are, loving, merciful, powerful, and just. We praise you for the ways you act in creation, creating beauty, bringing freedom, making peace, offering healing. We thank you for the opportunities you will set before us today to glorify you in our words and actions. We thank you for this very day in which we are able to enjoy you by participating in your activity in the world. We pray that enmity between people and nations may give way to a true communion. In the name of Christ, the great reconciler, we pray. Amen. Amen. And now may God the Father keep watch over us and all nations. May Christ the Son restore us in body and soul. And may the Holy Spirit keep us faithful, giving thanks to God our whole life long. Amen. <laughs> Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks.